friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. This is part 2 of our tutorial for making the customer record app using dictionaries. Remember that we had made the main screen layout in the part 1 of this tutorial and make sure that all your arrangements are inside this main screen layout. If I close it you can see everything is now inside my main screen layout that is main screen layout is the parent of all these arrangements so make sure that it is the same way for your screen too now select it and duplicate it control c control v for windows command c command v for mac os now let's get rid of this second list view and also get rid of this Preload button 2 and delete all button 2 arrangement. So delete the entire horizontal arrangement. Now we are left with this name and all that. So let's quickly rename them too because this is for our update screen. So renamed it to update name text and update phone text. Now rename this add button to save button and change the text to save. Rename this find button to delete button. Change the text accordingly. Now let's rename this main screen layout to. So rename it to update screen layout. Okay. And make it invisible by unchecking visible. Okay. Now let's go to the block section. We need another global variable for our selected record index. So I can duplicate this one and make it selected record index and this is equal to a math block containing the value 0. Okay and we are using the concept of virtual screens here that is two full screen layouts out of which only one is visible at one time. So when the screen is initialized here this is the event for that. When screen is initialized, we want to make sure that only our main screen layout is visible and not the update screen layout. So let's make quickly a procedure for that. So this is called show main screen. And what we're going to do is we are going to put set main screen visible here and make it true. And we can duplicate this and choose our update screen and make it false. Whenever we want to show our main screen, we can quickly call this procedure and let's duplicate this procedure and call it show update screen. And here we reverse these values. So main screen layout false and update screen layout true, okay? So when the screen is initialized, we want to make sure that our main screen is being shown so we can just call the procedure show main screen, okay? Now, we have a list view and that contains all the records that have been loaded from the database and that are currently inside the database. So we want to show our update screen when the user taps and selects a record from that list view. So for that, we want to capture the event of that tapping on the list view and that is from list view after picking event. And inside here, first of all, I'm going to set my global record index to whatever has been picked inside the list view. So if I get to my list view, I can get the selection index, okay? Now what is next? I want to fill up my update name text and update phone text with the values from the record selected by the user when he tapped on it. So how can I do that? First of all, I'm going to click on my update name text and get its setter. And I am going to give it the value corresponding to the key name inside our dictionary. And which dictionary? The dictionary that is the record that has been chosen by the user by tapping on the screen. So go to dictionaries and get the get value for key block. And here 
What is the key? The key is the name. So text block name. And what is the dictionary? The dictionary is the item inside a global list of records corresponding to the selected record index. Okay, so if I go to list, I can get the select list item log and here the list is the global list of records. So let me go to variables and get a getter and this is the global list of records and the index is the index selected by the user. So just duplicate this and choose selected record index. And similarly, I can duplicate this and change this to update phone text. And here key is now phone. Okay, so make sure there's no spelling mistake. And it is exactly the same as the keys that you used for creating the dictionary. Okay, and what next? I want to show my update screen. So call that procedure, simple, okay? Now, after the user is shown the filled up update name text box and the update phone text box from the values from the database, now the user can either make some changes and press the save button or he can press the delete button to delete that record from the list of records and eventually the database. Get the save button click event. So what happens? I'm going to do exactly the same as this thing, the add button that make a record, but this time take the values from the update name text and update phone text, okay? It's very similar, isn't it? Now, what is the difference? I'm not going to be adding it to the list of records, I will be actually replacing the existing record with this updated record, okay? So if I go to my lists, I can get this replace list item block. And here, what is the list? The list is our global list of records. What is the index? The index is our selected record index. So I can duplicate this getter and choose selected record index and what is our replacement? The replacement is our updated global record. So I can again duplicate this and choose record here. Okay, now I'm going to store this in the DB exactly the same as the add button code and I'm also going to update my list view. Okay, and I am going to show my main screen again. So if I go to procedures, call my show main screen procedure and last but not the least, I am going to update my selected record index back to zero. And I will tell you the significance of it, why we are doing it a bit later. So I'm going to make sure that it is set back to zero, okay? Now, what happens when the user presses the delete button on the update screen layout? So let's get the click event. What happens here? We are going to remove that record from our lists. So from lists, get the remove item block, and here, what is the list? The list is our global list of records, so I can duplicate it here. And what is the index? The index is our selected record index, so I can choose it here, okay? And I am also again going to call my update list view. I'm also going to store the current status of my list of records back into the database. And I am also going to call my main screen showing procedure because I want to show the main screen again and make the update screen invisible. And I'm going to do the same thing here that I'm going to set my selected record index back to zero. Now, what happens when the user presses the find button, okay? Remember we have a find button for searching a record 
by providing the name. Now we will assume that he has provided a name and you will need to add some error checks if you're making a professional app that he has provided a name here. So let's go to the blocks. Now let's make the click event. So let's make it here. And when the find button is pressed, so let's get the click event for it. What happens? We are again going to make a local variable just like we did in our update list view procedure. But this time you're going to actually look for the record by searching inside the list of records, okay? So let's go to variables and get this initialize local variable block and make this found list and give it an empty list block. And we are going to loop through our list of records. And this time we're not going to be using this loop for each item in list, but this loop for each number, because this way we will be able to know at which position we find the record. That is essential for updating the record or deleting it, okay? So get this for loop. And here for each number, from one. So we are starting from one and we are going up to the length of our global list of records. So this is not five. We are going to go to list and get the length of list block. And here we are going to provide it a global list of records. And we are going to increment our loop by one. Okay. So, so that we don't miss any of the items. Okay. So we're just going to go through our list of records one by one, searching for a record whose name contains the name provided by the user, okay? So if I go to text, I can get this contains block, okay? And if I go to control, I can get the if block. And here I plug this in. And what is the text? The text is the value for this key name, okay? So I can duplicate it from here. But here, now we have to make a change here. This is not the selected record index. We are iterating through the loop. So this is the number. So whatever the number is, when we are going through the for loop, get the dictionary and from the dictionary, get the value for key name, okay? and look inside it to see whether it contains the name provided by the user. So if I click here, we can get the name text, okay? And in case it is found, I am going to add this along with the phone to my found list, okay? So go to list and get the add item block. And here the list is our found list. So if I hover over it, I can get the getter for it. And what is the item? Now, remember that this found list, I will be showing it to the user in the same way as I was showing my global list of records in the list view. So I can get that way of showing from here and make the changes. So this is my update list view procedure. So if I get the join block from here, duplicate it and bring it down. And plug it in here, okay? Now you will see that there's an error against this item an item because remember that loop that we were using in our update list view procedure was the other loop in which we were iterating through the loop and just looking at the items. In this case, we are going by position. So here, this is not get item. This is actually this one. Okay, so it's the same as this one. Okay, so if this is the record that has been found containing 
the name text provided by the user. So I can duplicate this. This is the dictionary, okay, because this record is a dictionary. And I will just join the name dash phone and add it to my found list. And this is important. I am going to set my selected record index to get number. This is the position at which the record was discovered inside my list of records and I need that position for updating or deleting, okay? So if I go to variables, I can get the setter and selected record index and I make it equal to get number. Now this is super important. What I'm going to be doing is that as soon as a record is found, I want that exit the, the for loop. There's no need to search anymore. So if I go to my control, I can get this break. So what does the break block does? It just takes you out of this for loop, okay? So this will take me out of the for loop. And now what should I do? I should set my list views elements to my found list. It might be empty or it might contain one item in it, okay? So list view and set its elements to the found list, okay? Now we need to make a slight change in the list views after picking event that if the picking event happens after the user has looked for a particular customer by pressing the find button, then we need to use the selected record index that we got from here, okay? From the get number after searching through the record, okay? So here, as you can see that we are assigning it to list view dot selection index. If we continue to use this code and user picks an item from the list view after pressing the find button, there will be just one record, okay? And this will make the list view dot selection index equal to one, but that is not what we want. We want the re selected record index inside the list of records at which the record was actually discovered, okay? And we did do it here, but this code will overwrite that code. So what should we do now? What we can do is that if my selected record index is zero, then only I am going to use list view dot selection index. Otherwise, I am going to not change the selected record index because in that case, this means, if it is not zero, this means that we got to this event after the user has searched for a record and found a record and now he wants to edit it by picking it, okay? So this is why we made our selected record index zero at the end of delete button and zero at the end of save button because we wanted to reset it back to zero so that we can do this check here that if it is equal to zero, then this means that the user did not do any search and he, he is selecting the record from the entire global list of records, okay? So if I go to control, I can get the if block and here, I'm going to check using the equal to block from logic that whether my global record index is equal to zero. So if it is equal to zero, only then I am going to do this. Otherwise, I know that my selected record index contains the index of the found record and I need it for deleting it or updating it, okay? And even for filling up this update name text and update font text, okay? Now, what else? Remember we had a reload button also? So this is for when we want to reload or reset our list view to its default look, that is, all the records from the database. And this we need to do if we searched for a particular record and now we want to look at the entire 
records again. So what is the code? Just call our update list view procedure because this will be using the list of records to populate the list view. Okay, so this will reset it back to the entire list of records. So this is done. And I hope you like this video and understood this tutorial for searching for a record and updating and deleting a particular record that the user has picked from the list view. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do so, so that you don't miss any of the great things that I've planned for you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day and goodbye.